I kind of chuckle when I see people going uh, ballistic over the Powerball or any lottery for that matter because uh, I know the truth. You know, uh, I know what the true riches are. And uh, it, it amazes me to see people get so excited over something that is so temporal, something that's just going to pass away. They act like they just inherited eternal life, uh, the way they act. But sadly, uh, you know, that money that they win will actually be a distraction to them. In many cases, it ends up becoming a problem. A lot of folks that win the lottery end up uh, in bad shape, worse shape uh, after they win than they were before they won. Uh, so, you know, the scripture talks about the deceitfulness of riches, the deceitfulness of riches. That is, riches themselves can be deceitful. And so if you're one of those out there that's uh, maybe not outwardly, but inwardly envious of those that won the Powerball, well, you may want to think about that because uh, everybody and anybody they know is going to be looking for them. Um, they're going to be looking for a handout. It's really, you think about it, these people that win a lot of money, um, they end up, be, it becomes a curse to them. It really does. And a lot of people that have won the lottery have actually said that they wish they never won the lottery. There's people that have said that. You know, I, I think about the life that I have and the modest life that I live. And yet, I'm not, I don't have high blood pressure. I'm not anxious. I'm not worried. I'm not troubled. Um, bills are paid. There's a roof over my head. Um, even when somebody will ask me, what do you do for a living? Or, you know, do you... Do you do well or whatever? I'll just say I live comfortably. Now, in the world's vernacular, living comfortably means having a lot of money. Well, I don't have a lot of money, but I, I have what I need. What more do you need than what you need? I mean, why do you need more than beyond your means, than what you can even do? You know, you people, oh, if I just had more money then I would be more happier. Don't believe that. That's a lie. If you're not happy without money, you're not going to be happy with money. Money does not make you happy. Just ask people that have it. It does not make you happy. And it doesn't gain friends because uh, those that uh, become your friends just because you have money, that's not a real friend. That's not a true friend. And so I, I, I hope that this message will kind of cut through the, uh, you know, outer myth, you know, that outer mask, you know, that, that veneer, that, uh, that mystique that the world makes you think that they're happy when they're not happy. No, the, the only way you can truly be happy is in Jesus Christ. There is no happiness outside Jesus Christ. There is no joy. There is no peace. There is no happiness outside of Jesus Christ. And so people that say that they're happy when they don't have Jesus Christ, they're lying. They're lying. You can't be happy. I hear them saying they're blessed. You can't be blessed without Jesus. Only Jesus Christ can bless somebody. You, you can't. You can't have the blessing of God in your life uh, with, without being obedient to Jesus. The scripture tells us that God blesses the obedient. The blessing of God is upon those that have faith and obedience. And uh, the disobedient, the scripture says, the curse is upon. In fact, the Lord said, he'll even turn your blessing into a curse if you disobey him. So I would say that we, in this hour, need to keep our eyes on Jesus. We need 
to uh, look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, and we need to seek the true riches that fadeth not away, that are reserved in heaven for us. We need to realize that we are heirs, we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ, that we are to inherit a kingdom that shall never pass away. The kingdoms of this world are going to pass away, folks. When Jesus comes in the clouds, the scripture says the rich, the wealthy, the the powerful, the kings of the earth are going to cry out and say that this is the wrath of the Lamb. And they're going to cry out for the rocks to fall on them, to hide them from him who sits on his throne. Their money, their riches is not going to deliver them in that day, folks. Amen? Silver and gold, the scripture says that the silver is going to be cast into the streets and that the gold is going to be removed. We're coming into a cashless society. We're coming into a time where gold will not be worth anything uh, because you, you won't be able to trade with it. You will not be able to use it anymore. And so the reason it says they're going to cast their silver in the streets is because it'll be worthless. But the reason it says the gold will be removed, you look up that word removed, it has to do with being uh, basically confiscated. You say, well, Brother Joseph, they can't just come and take my gold. They can't just come. Listen, they did it under, I think it was Eisenhower. They did it under one of the president, or maybe it was R.D. Roosevelt. I don't remember. It was during the Depression. But basically, all gold coins had to be turned into the government. You don't think they can just confiscate your gold? They did it back then. What makes you think they can't do it today? And so the scripture says the gold will be removed. The silver will be cast into the streets. You know and I know there's a mark coming, the mark of the beast that's going to replace uh, money. And we know that you will not be able to buy or sell without uh, the mark of the beast. So listen, folks, everything is about to change. Everything is about to change. We are on the absolute preposis right now of everything getting ready to radically, completely change on planet Earth. It's going to happen suddenly. It's not going to happen where you're going to see it on the news and it's slowly going to come in. No, it's going to be sudden. It's going to be sudden. The scripture says when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. So understand that God's judgment comes swiftly. It's swift, folks. If you think that you can store up your treasures on this earth and serve Jesus Christ at the same time, you are sadly mistaken. You cannot store up treasure on this earth and keep your focus on Jesus Christ. You cannot. It's impossible. That's why God says he's chose the poor of this world rich in faith. See, we need to be rich towards God in faith. I love what Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. The gold, the silver, all the money in the world weren't going to make that man walk, but Jesus did. Amen. That's the riches that you and I need, brothers and sisters, the faith to help people, the faith to to heal the sick, to cast out devils. Amen. We need the true riches of God so that we might be wealthy in the kingdom, so that we might be endowed in the kingdom. Amen. Endowed with power from on high so that we might be witnesses unto him. In this day, in this age in which we live, that we might be witnesses unto him, folks. Are we witnesses? Have we been witnesses unto Jesus Christ? Are we walking in royalty in this hour? Are we walking in the kingdom? When people see us, do they see kings and priests? Do they see the royalty of Christ? Do they see those on this earth that are not uh, sad of countenance? that are sorrowful? Do they see those in this hour that are dignified? 
Do they see those that walk with a straight back? Do they see those that walk like kings on the earth? Praise God. When you have his righteousness in you, it'll give you some backbone. You won't be bent over. You won't be slouched over. You won't be sorrowful. You won't be sad. You'll be full of joy. You'll have the victory and you'll walk as Jesus walked when he was on this earth, folks. We must be in charge of our life through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And when we walk, wherever we walk, people should look upon us and say, there's something different about that person. I don't know what it is, but there's something different. Folks, listen to what I'm telling you. Seek the true riches, the true riches, to be filled with the divine nature of Christ, to be filled with all the fullness of God, to have the wisdom, to have the knowledge, to have the understanding, to be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the height, the depth, the breadth, the length, to know the love of Christ, which surpasses all knowledge, hallelujah. We need so desperately in this hour to get our eyes off the world, get our eyes off the things of this world, get our eyes on Jesus, amen. Look up. Look up, Jesus said, when you begin to see these things coming to pass, look up for your redemption. Your complete state of release draws near. I love what uh, Potiphar, or not Potiphar, but um, what the Pharaoh said to uh, Joseph. He said, only in the throne shall I be greater than you. Only in the throne shall I be greater than you. And that's what Jesus is saying to you and I. Behold, to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I have overcome and am set down with my father in his throne. The Lord would have us to rule with him. The Lord would have us to rule in righteousness, to sit with him in royalty, to sit with him in authority, to sit with him in his kingdom, folks. Amen? I'm not talking about some fairy tale. I'm not talking about something in some movie. I'm not talking about something in Hollywood or something at Disneyland. I'm talking about the truth. I'm talking about reality. I'm talking about the true riches that will never fade away, that will never pass away. Incorruptible that fadeth not away. The scripture says to those who are kept by the power of God ready to be revealed in the last time. The scripture tells us that there is something being kept in reserve for those who are kept by the power of God ready to be revealed in the last time. There is something being kept for those that are being kept by the power of God in these last days. There's going to be a demonstration of the goodness and the power and the majesty of Christ. There's going to be power demonstrated again in this hour. We will see the lame walk. We'll see the blind open eyes open. We'll see the deaf ears open. We'll see those that need deliverance be delivered. God is going to do it. Hallelujah. He's faithful. He is true to his word. He is faithful. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah to God, people. Listen, the real power of God has yet to be demonstrated on this earth. The real power of God. We've seen the fakes. We've seen the fraud. We've seen the Benny Hins. We've yet to see the sons of God. All creation is groaning, travailing for that which shall be revealed in these last days. The manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. Praise His holy name. Power with Jesus. Power with Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. So if you're one of those that's been getting your eyes off the true riches, let this message encourage you to get your eyes back on the true riches and seek those riches which are above. Amen. Praise God. 
Hallelujah. In closing, the scripture says, Jesus said these words. He said, he's, Jesus said these words. He said, where your treasure is. Listen, where your heart is, is where your treasure is. Whatever your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be also. Amen. We need to make sure that our treasure is Jesus. We need to make sure we treasure him above everything else. He must become our all in all. And just as Paul the Apostle said, I love what Paul said. Paul said that I might win Christ. Amen. Forgetting those things which are behind, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen to Paul the Apostle. He says, I count it all down. Everything that I've ever accomplished, everything that man thinks that I have been, he says, and all of it, the Sanhedrin, everything, all that I was a part of, all that I can boast of, he says, I count it all down that I might win Christ. Hallelujah. Do you, friend, do you count everything outside Jesus Christ dung? Just, just nothing. It's just worthless comparing to what he's offering you and I, the true riches. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name, Lord. Without you, Jesus, we can do absolutely nothing. Nothing. But we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. Hallelujah. Remember this, and, and I'm closing. Your silver and your gold cannot deliver you in the day of God's wrath. Remember that. Only the true riches. That's why the scripture says, Buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich. Amen. God bless you.